Hi everyone, I'm Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and this is the monthly update for September 1st of 2022. We're continuing our three-part series on the different types of thermal features in Yellowstone. Last month, we were at Mammoth Hot Springs looking at Travertine Springs. This month, we're coming to you from Biscuit Basin in the Upper Geyser Basin near Old Faithful to talk about neutral chloride features. Now, this is the sort of feature that's associated with some of the most iconic thermal areas in Yellowstone, like Grand Prismatic Spring and Old Faithful. They're formed from water, snowmelt and rain water that circulates deep beneath the earth and becomes heated by the cooling magma body beneath Yellowstone. It also picks up some gases from that magma body and because it's warm it starts dissolving some of the rock that's very high in silica beneath the surface. Now that warm water then buoyantly rises up to the surface even through some of the colder groundwater that may be between that and the surface and when it reaches the surface it deposits a lot of that silica that it has dissolved in the rock below. And that gives you these really beautiful terrace features and also some of the cones that make up geysers like Old Faithful, Castle, and Giant. So neutral chloride features, some of the most iconic features in Yellowstone National Park. All right, now let's talk about the deformation, seismic activity, and geyser activity that occurred during the month of August. August seismicity in the Yellowstone region was pretty typical for the area. And in fact, it was dominated by earthquakes that were part of a single swarm. And the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, which is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 290 earthquakes in the region during the month. And of those, 221 were part of this earthquake swarm that's occurring in the northwest part of the park between Norris Geyser Basin area and Mammoth Hot Springs. Now, this is the most seismically active area of the park between Hebgen Lake and sort of the north central part of Yellowstone. So we often see lots of earthquakes in here and lots of earthquake swarms. Now, this swarm has been flaring up and cooling down off and on since late July of this year. And it had another little flare up late in August, which included three magnitude three events. And this is not atypical for Yellowstone, where there can be little bursts like this. In fact, back in 2021, there was a burst of earthquakes beneath Yellowstone Lake, 800 events over the course of 10 days that included several magnitude three events. And you may remember back in 2017, there were 2,400 earthquakes that occurred as part of a three month long swarm right in this area, again, between Hebgen Lake and Norris Geyser Basin, included magnitude four events and several magnitude three. So this sort of swarm is pretty typical for Yellowstone. Right on the very last day of the month too, night of August 31st local time, there were some earthquakes down near Lewis Lake as well that included one magnitude three event. So it may seem like a lot of earthquakes, a lot of magnitude threes, but this is pretty typical for Yellowstone. We usually see about 10 magnitude three events every year. So far this year, we have six of these events. So we're right on track for kind of an average year for Yellowstone seismicity. Turning now to ground deformation, this is vertical deformation at the White Lake GPS site. And this is located on the east side of the caldera on the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. This plot shows the last two years of vertical deformation. Each one of these blue dots is a day's worth of data. And the overall trend here is one of subsidence. These downward trends indicate subsidence. But in each summer that's shown here, summer of 2021 and summer of 2022, there is a little bit of uplift or at least a pause in that substance. And that's caused by groundwater sort of puffing up the ground like a sponge. And this groundwater comes from recharge due to rainwater and snow melt that is percolated into the subsurface. Now this trend of subsidence has been ongoing since 2015 at rates of about one to two inches per year. And every summer, it's interrupted or paused slightly by this little bit of uplift caused by the groundwater recharge. And that little bit of uplift amounts to less than an inch per year overall rate. If we look on the west side of the caldera near Old Faithful, we see the exact same trends. Overall subsidence over time with an interruption in those subsidence trends during summer months, as we're seeing here in 2021 and again here in 2022. Now, looking at the Norris Geyser Basin, things have been relatively flat there over the last couple of years. This big deviation here in late 2021 is caused by snow that covered the GPS antenna and created this strange signal. And as soon as the snow left the antenna, melted away from the antenna, we got back to normal. But you see the same overall trend of a little bit of uplift during the summer months. So this is affecting everywhere in the park that water can percolate into the subsurface and cause it to, to puff up a little bit as groundwater accumulates. Finally, we go to the world's tallest geyser, Steamboat Geyser, which had been enjoying a real nice surge in activity since 2018. This is the temperature in the outflow channel of Steamboat Geyser. You can see these relatively hot temperatures 
bouncing up and down quite a bit, that's evidence that there's a lot of minor eruptive activity at the geyser, and that often precedes a major eruption. Now, this actually went throughout the month. We don't have any data in the last week of the month because, unfortunately, Internet has been out to the Norris Museum where we collect the data. But we know from the actual observations of the geyser that this activity has continued. Now, hopefully that means we're in store for a major eruption sometime soon. The last major eruption of Steamboat was June 20th. So we've had a few months of no major eruptions, but lots of minor activity. Now, hopefully this minor activity means, though, that Steamboat's not quite done putting on a show for us and maybe will give us uh, one or two more big eruptions before the end of the season. Well, that does it for the monthly update for September 1st, 2022. Now, remember, if you have any questions at all, you can feel free to email us anytime at yvowebteam, that's all one word, at usgs.gov. Next month, we're going to come to you from some of the acidic thermal features in Yellowstone. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next month.